Assalamu alaikum viewers, this is Dr. Atar Mansoor from TRAX. For today's video, I have invited Daniel Zaid into my show. And this video is a very special video from the perspective of those who are aspiring to study in the United States of America and specifically on scholarship. And Daniel is the most suitable person for this video because he himself has pursued a Master of Public Policy degree at Texas A&M University and specifically at the Bush School. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir, for having me. Okay, Daniel, so I will begin with a very basic question. Why did you choose the United States of America as your preferred educational destination? Uh, sir, very interesting question. I've been asked this a lot. And uh, my reason has been very simple. Uh, America for me is a land of opportunities. When I was looking into different universities, be it Europe, be it Asia, I found US to be the most diverse. The academic um, um, syllabus was probably the most, uh, um, I would say, tough. And overall, I felt that the quality of life and the quality of you know interaction with others played a very important role. So for me, um, the US was always the preferred choice. And I hope uh, after my two years experience, that experiment uh, proved uh, very right. All right, so this means that you had a marvelous and a wonderful experience at the US. Absolutely. So in hindsight, when you look at your decision, you consider it to be an excellent decision, right? Yes. Okay, now coming to my next question. It's why did you choose public policy? Because public policy is a discipline which is multidisciplinary and it is considered to be somewhat complicated. True. Because there are so many other areas which creep into the domain of public policy. Uh, for example, economics, anthropology, history, finance, finance business, political science, etc., etc. So how did you come to this decision? And how did you choose uh, this degree? Yes, sir. sir so as you uh, mentioned that uh, public policy is an amalgamation of different, different disciplines. My bachelor's was in economics and finance. I, I did not want to get into uh, pure economics or finance. That's why I chose public policy because, you know, it involves a lot of different perspectives. You have finance, economics, law and other uh, subjects. And I wanted uh, to be, you know, I wanted to expand into these disciplines. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, my uh, family uh, has a government background and I was always inspired by my father. Uh, he played an important role in policy making process. And for that, I think public policy plays an important part. And third, I, I personally feel that in today's world, where, you know, you have ample opportunities if you study public policy. You, you can go into the development sector. You can practice finance. You can even go into the uh, into the government uh, government side. So I find that uh, we giving uh, all those opportunities, public policy was probably the best fit for me. Great answer, and I think it's very elaborate, and the viewers would benefit from your comprehensive answer. Moving on to my next question, uh, Daniel, America is an expensive place for Correct. pursuing higher education. Correct. And uh, after choosing America and then public policy. What challenges did you face when you came to the final you know, decision of how would you finance your degree? And I would seek your answer in terms of uh, did you get any funding? Did you get any scholarship or you were a full tuition paying student? So what were the financial constraints or maybe incentives? as far as America was concerned. Sir, uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, US is an expensive destination, there's no doubt about it. I got accepted into five universities, but uh, my final decision came down with the financial aspect. Uh, I was lucky enough that I was offered an 80% scholarship in Texas uh, A&M University. I still remember my, uh, my first year university fee was $11,000, but I was granted a scholarship of up to $8,000. So I only had to pay $2,000 from my own pocket. Uh, my uh, academic scores were relatively uh, good. My GRE score, I, G I scored well in my GRE. So that played a part. But I feel uh, in America, especially if you go towards the public policy field, there are ample scholarships available. I got scholarships from three out of five universities. But why I chose public policy was probably because I was getting a lot of funding over other universities. 
Great. So uh, your financial aspect was covered by the university to about 80%. Correct. Sir. So how did you manage your living, boarding and lodging and your living expenses? Because tuition, 11,000 was you, as you told, yes, was sir. the per year tuition TD. Yes. And you got 8,000. So you had to pay 3,000 or 2,000? 2,500. 2,500, I don't know. And the rest was on your boarding and lodging. So yes. how did you manage that? Sir, so the first semester was difficult. I'll be very honest. I uh, I had to, uh, uh, you know, I had to uh, get support from my family. But uh, once I settled in the university, I started a, a side job. I used to work in the uh, in the library. That paid relatively well. And after the first semester, my GPA I think was a, was above three point five, which gave me an additional uh, scholarship of around fifteen hundred dollars per semester. I used that fifteen hundred for my rent and accommodation. I used a share to share apartment. I used it with my friend, so that helped a lot. So uh, my lesson will be: if you work hard, especially during your first semester, if you if you get a scholarship of, of above a certain threshold, you are compensated by the university. Great. So again, I think good learning point from the viewers, from the viewers' perspective, who are uh, aspiring again to study at the US and then uh, trying to find a program which is funded by the university and how you can finance your boarding and lodging also. Now, coming to the next question, Daniel, uh, what do you think are the major aspects which an applicant or a candidate to a master's degree in the US should consider while preparing his or her, her application? I mean to say that, you know, different weights are assigned to different aspects of your application. Correct. As you mentioned in one of your answers that your GRE was good, Maybe, you know, there is a, a statement which you need to write and letters of recommendation are there. So what do you think uh, a candidate should spend time the most on which aspect and then how he or she, she should take into account different aspects while considering, uh, while preparing a strong application to, to the US? Yes. So that's a question I have been asked a lot. And my first, my utmost advice to all people applying abroad will be to start early. The U.S. application process is relatively lengthier as compared to others. You have to fill in a lot of documentation. So it's always better that you start early. One advantage of starting early is that you have uh, you have chance to avail more scholarships because if, if you apply when uh, less uh, people are applying, you have greater chance to acquiring scholarship. Then I would say seek help uh, there, uh, from friends, mentors, or there are a, a, a lot of Educational institutions are offering free, um, uh, free, you know, scholarships or free educational assistance. In my case, uh, the United States Edu Education Foundation in Pakistan offered free consultation for anyone who is applying to the U.S. I visited their office. They asked me about my profile and they helped me narrow down the universities. Second, uh, your academic uh, uh, statement of purpose should, uh, you know, sh should have a lot of research in it. You have to differentiate yourself from others. I don't mean when I say differentiate, you have to be the doctor in your class, but you have to make your application um, um, relatively unique. And it should stand out. It should stand out. And it's not difficult to stand out. Just focus on your core competencies. Why do you want to pursue some internships that you've taken, some academic uh, courses that you've taken? It's easy. And narrate your life story according to it. People, you know, people uh, waste a lot of their time on so unnecessary metrics like, you know, securing, writing a letter of recommendation from a, from a principal, that really doesn't matter. Your life story should stick out. You should tell them why you're in, interested in, uh, in your degree and just give them some practical internships, job experiences that you have. The rest, obviously GRE, you need to study for it. IELTS, TOEFL, you have to give. But if you start early and seek help like I did from professionals, you will land, land a good university. Great. Okay, then I'll post study. Uh, what did you do? Did you stay in the U.S. or come back to Pakistan immediately? Sir, I stayed in the U.S. I worked for around four years. Two of them at a multinational company, Oracle, and two of them at an... Uh, wow, a, Oracle is a big name, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I was lucky enough to get enrolled in it. Mm -hmm. And two of them at um, an accounting company called RSL. Wow, from public policy, you landed into Oracle and then you went into RSL accounting. What a diverse range of experience you mustered in the U.S. Exactly. And that is the benefit of having a public policy. You uh, you can be you can be accepted anyway. So viewers, I think this is the golden tip. Public sure. policy is an interdisciplinary subject and it can land you at many places. Okay, please. Sorry to interject. Yeah. Sir, so four years in the U.S. Uh, then I think two years back, I, I came back to Pakistan. 
and I started a, at a private institution and I ended up currently I'm working at SPEDA, which is a government organization which focuses on small and medium enterprises. So uh, thanks to public... Again, a very versatile experience, landed in a private sector, university and then moving into a government organization. Yes. So again, I think uh, credit goes to public policy. Public right? policy and thanks okay. to it, I've had a diverse experience in the skill set. Okay. So you spent about three years in the US? Uh, four years. Four years. And for that you got work visa or what was it? Yes, sir. so I I got a work visa. It uh, was J1? It was J1, yes. Okay. Initially I got it uh, and after four years I got transitioned to, to a green card. Okay. So but you so finally I, got the green card? I got a green card and then I came back. Oh, so you finally secured your future in the US that if you have to go back, you have the option. Anyway, so you can you tell the viewers a little bit about the difference between F1 and J1 visa? Yeah, sir. So uh, J1 is um, uh, F1 is a um, is an employment visa. Mm -hmm. uh, if you directly go to the US, uh, you need an F1 visa. But for a J1 visa, you have to uh, if you go as a student, you're eligible to work is uh, uh, immediately after your. Um, Degrees. So F1 is for educational purposes. Yes. And J1 is for after degree for employment purposes. For employment purposes. Okay. Uh, immediately after you pursue your degree. Okay. So F1 is granted on your I20, I guess. Yes. Which right. is the admission letter after That's you true. secure admission in your yes. university. Yes. And you apply F1 visa at the U.S. consulate or embassy, embassy in Pakistan. And then you, uh, when you post study, you want to work, you can work, get it converted to JMA. Yes. Okay. So then I have three exciting things which you want to share about the U.S. Uh, uh, apart from their academic excellence and the corporate, uh, you know, the, the 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 way the corporate sector is developed because you worked at Oracle, you correct. worked at RSL, and you have had exposure. And you lived in one the biggest state in the U.S. Texas is, I guess, the yes. biggest state so in terms I've of area. Lived in Texas and California. California and California is the most beautiful state I have heard. I haven't been to California. I've stayed in New York, and okay. I stayed in mo most of my life. I stayed in the eastern part of the U.S. Uh, but uh, three exciting things you want to tell the viewers about U.S. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, number one, it's a very friendly country. People tell you it's racist. It's not. It's actually not. People are very friendly, and you, they accept you with open arms. Uh, it's very diverse. I've had friends from all across uh, different cultures, different religions, and I've had lifetime experiences. Okay. And third, uh, if you uh, really work hard, it's the best place to live and succeed. Okay, great. So it's definitely a land of opportunities. Hundred head is very welcoming. No doubt, uh, no matter you are from Pakistan or Muslim background or ethnically, uh, you know, from any part of the world, they, they, like, they, they like to welcome talent, exactly. they would like to retain talent, they True. would like to acquire talent and that's why that it is known as the that land, land, land of awareness. So, Dalia, thank you so much for sparing uh, time for us. Thank you, sir. I think uh, yeah, you're welcome and it's our pleasure and I think this video will be very valuable for those who really want to pursue their educational and uh, job careers, professional careers in the U.S. Uh, we would uh, also like to invite you in a future show about your experience at Oracle sure. and RSL and then moving back to Pakistan, your experience with university and now with the government. And sure, sure. I would love to be back. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, viewers, for watching this video. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tracks.Pakistan, and stay tuned for more exciting videos.